there! I am Diane Simmons from Cake Connection in Jackson, Michigan. And today, during our live free online class, we are going to make some wafer paper flowers. I have some samples right down here. I will say goodbye for my facial. You're going to get a lot of zooming close in from now on. Okay. So Eric hopefully is showing you. These are just some samples that were made, oh my gosh, probably anywhere from two to four years ago. So they are fairly durable, as you can see. Nothing, nothing too fragile going on there. All right. And then also today, before we get going, I want to let you know about our prize giveaway over here. And to enter this, um, actually what I would like you to do today, you can certainly just shout out and say hi, but we would like to hear what you would like to see for videos for the rest of this week. We are still going to be doing one each day at 11 a.m., but let us know what you'd like to see. We had some requests last week for some buttercream flowers, um, some Russian tips I think were brought up. I'm probably going to do those... Um, possibly tomorrow or Wednesday, I'm not sure, but let me hear if you've got other suggestions or requests, and we will try and get a full week schedule out yet this afternoon and let you know what we've got coming up. Alrighty, so we're going to jump right in. I'm going to push these forward just a little bit. Okay, we zoomed in here. Right on your hands. All right, so to get started, this is wafer paper. It is a fairly flexible, okay, if you're not familiar with it, I'm not sure if you will be able to see this on the zoom in or not. I've got one sheet with the smooth side up and the other side, it's got like a smooth and a bumpy texture on both sides and my cameraman is saying no you can't see it. Does it show up any better with the colored? No, okay, I'm getting a no from my, from my camera boy here. <laughs> so, just when you when you get wafer paper, you will notice, since it's not showing on camera, that we have a bumpy, a smooth side. Um, when we are doing this, when I put these together, I will be attaching the wire to the bumpy side, and then dusting and coloring the flowers on the smooth side, but you'll see that as we, as we get going further. Okay. So, to get started, you basically are going to need some 28 gauge wire, and I really do recommend you get paper covered wire versus cloth covered. Uh, the difference, if you're not familiar, um, cloth covered you're typically going to be able to find in most of your big box uh, craft stores, like Joann's, Hobby Lobby, Michael, that type thing. Um, the cloth covered, though, when it gets wet, which we will be getting the wire wet to adhere it, um, that the cloth unravels. It's a bunch of really tiny threads, and it literally will just unravel as it gets wet. So you really want to spend your money. This is one of those times that you do need the paper-covered wire. That is going to be available for more of your cake supply stores. We do have it here. I have it on the website. Um... But if you're, you know, if you've got a local store, please support them, get, get it from them as well, okay? And the next thing that I am going to be using is a paper punch, okay? You don't have to have paper punches by any means. You can just use scissors and freeform cut. You could also take a metal uh, cookie cutter if you have shapes that you want. And just push that into the wafer paper to get a little impression or you could simply trace it with a food color marker and then cut with your scissors okay I do have this set works great for these flowers that we're, I'm going to show you today so I'm going to show you how to do this all right and depending on what I'm doing I could cut all three of these but 
Okay. And as you can see, you get three different size petals. A little center dot there we don't utilize. Now, if I want to do everything all one shape or all one size, okay, I am going to cut a strip of paper. And then, as you notice, I'm flipping this over to the back side. Reason for that is so I can watch where I'm cutting. So I just want to use, for the flower I'm going to show you today, we're just using the bigger one. So I'm going to go in and just lining that up. Press, cut, okay. We'll do one more there just so you can see. I've just got some scrap paper stuck down in there. Get that unstuck. And again, I'm just lining that up. Press cut. And just get the excess scrap out of the way. Okay. And again, if you don't have the cutter, you could absolutely freehand some petals. What we're going to be making today is just some of the lilies, so you could totally just freehand something like that. Just get yourself six of the, a very similar shape. Okay? So once we have flower petals cut, I have some extras already pre-cut. Then we need to adhere a wire to them. So we can build our flower. Now, to stick the wires on, we're just going to take some of our other scrap paper. Okay. And we basically just need a thin strip. of wafer paper. Okay, we certainly don't need this long, just half, half that length will be plenty. So you can do that. The other thing you can do, this probably has to be one of my favorite finds for these flowers. These are called fringing scissors. They have five blades on them. Because who doesn't love fun toys, right? And look, you get all these even little strips all at once. There we go. Everything's all the same width. I happen to be a little OCD about some things. I, I admit it. This is one of them that just makes me all happy that I can get all the same size little strips there. So we have our 28 gauge wire paper covered. We have our flower petals all cut out, and then we have our little strips of wafer paper that we're going to use. Next up, this is a water pen. Okay, you don't hit, you can just use a small paintbrush with a little cup of water. Absolutely fine. This is just super convenient for this. Okay, and what I do is just brush that on the back there. And then I just kind of gently tapped it onto, tap the wire onto the wafer paper, just to stick to it, picked it up, and then I am pressing that into the back of that. And when I say the back of the pedal, you want to push the wire onto the bumpy side, okay? And I realize you guys can't see that on the camera. I don't know how to get it so you can see it on the camera, but just when, if you go to do this, press it into the bumpy side, okay? And just a reminder, if you've just joined in, be sure and give us a shout out, either say hi or tell us what you wanna see in some videos for the rest of this week, okay? Um, we need to know that you're here so you can be entered to win our giveaway today, which is a bunch of supplies for wafer papers.
flowers. We want you to win. Uh, this one does not want to stick to it. There, we'll just lay it on there. And again, after I get that on, the, I'm just pressing that in to adhere it to the back of it. Okay? So once we have those done, and I have some others that I pre-made here. Get our wire out of the way. And I do generally, if, if I'm doing a large amount of flowers or something, I'll go through and put the wires on the backs of all of them just to get that one process done. Okay? And then we'll move on to our next step, which is veining. So these are silicone veiners. All right? This one is a lily veiner. And you see it has the ridges and stuff in it. This is a just a kind of an all-purpose leaf. Works amazing for rose leaves, which I'll show you some of those too that we're going to do. For our lily petals, we are going to use the lily veiner. All right. And again, that's just a silicone veiner. And our next little toy that I have is a fine mist spritzer, okay? And inside of this, I have just put some vodka. L Cheap Vodka. Don't go spend lots of good money. I did forget to get that out. Let me grab that real quick. This is literally our five o'clock vodka. I go into the party store and tell them I want the cheapest stuff that they have. But the top of these just unscrew, you dump your liquid down in, screw that back on, and then you get a nice fine spritz. So, what we are going to do is take our flower petals, and I don't normally do this right on top of the table, but we're going to so you guys can see everything. Let me push those ahead a little bit here. So you want to hold your spritzer roughly a foot or so away, okay? You don't, don't hold it real close like this. You don't want a really, like, overwhelming spritz of it, okay? You just want to get it damp. And we're going to do one on each side. And, yes, I did do two on the first. I totally missed the leaf <laughs> or the petal the first time we did it. So then I'm going to put my wire side down on the bottom, put it in the bowl, and I'm just pressing on there, lift that up, here we're going to hold one of the other ones over there, hopefully, are the veins showing up on there, on camera? Hold on. Not very well. Hold them still. Okay, he's giving me a so-so that you can kind of see that. So this is our plain one, this is our veined one. Okay? There, now we'll do another one real quick. And again, we're putting the wire side down. Lay it in the veiner and just press it down. Okay, now if you overspray it, which this one I did on purpose, I held it a little bit closer just to get a little bit wetter than what I wanted it. And if you notice, it kind of, it wanted to stick a little bit. So a couple options. I could absolutely just leave it laying there for a minute or so, and that vodka is going to evaporate, but this way it'll hold its shape while it's still in the mold, okay? If you pull it up, we do have one question. Oh, we have a question, yes. Uh, where do you get the wafer paper? Okay, the wafer paper can be purchased at many supply stores. I do have it here. 
Um, I actually put a section on our website that is wafer paper flower supplies. It's a new category on there. So if you go into our online shop, you can find this. We have, I sell six packs of it. So if you just want to try it, kind of get your hands wet with it a little bit and see if you like it. Um, we have pink and pink, blue, and white available right now in the six packs. And then I do have um, 100 packs of the white available as well. Okay. So while this is damp, you can bend this around a little bit if you want to put some movement. Uh, more so you would want to do this if it were leaves. But you could absolutely bend your, bend your leaves up, do different things. Just shape your petals how you want them now. Okay? Question. We have a question. Could you possibly show the difference in the veiner? Which is the back of the petal and which is the front? And how do you determine that? Okay. This veiner has the little uh, notches. I'm not sure what exactly you want to call them in it that you get for, um, or that you have on lilies. Okay. Oh, let's see, what have I got? This is a good poker. Here, we'll use the tip of my marker. So, I don't know, can you see those little notches in there? Yes, we can. Excellent. So this is the top, all right? And then this is the bot. so this is the bottom side. On our leaf one, you're basically just going down in. So your wire would lay down into the bottom. And then this is the top side is going to press it, press it down, okay? Does that help, hopefully? Yeah, and then we have a couple more questions. Oh, a couple more questions, okay. <clears throat> what, um, what is the best way to color white wafer paper? We're going to get to that. Someone asked what the best way to color wafer paper is. I'm going to show you that here in just a minute. And then another one is, do you have to shape it while it's soft or after it's dry, can you do also? I typically will shape mine while it is still soft. Um, you can do a little bit of movement with it once it dries, but you're not going to want to do too much because it does, it'll get a little bit brittle, not, not terribly so, but I just, like I said, I, I try and shape, especially where the wire is, I'll shape that portion of it. And then what I often do is just use a little piece of styrofoam and then let them sit in there. Okay. Now I do have one that I want to show you. I intentionally oversprayed this. I did this last night while I was prepping everything. Okay. I put a couple spritzes on. So I want you to see the difference if you overspray and you pull it out of the veiner right away, it's going to wrinkle up kind of doing the raisin shrivel thing going on. All right. Um, if you're doing leaves, definitely not a bad thing. Or also if you wanted, for example, if you were doing some roses and you wanted to have some petals that were like they had fallen off just naturally from the flower itself getting a little old, it's not a bad look, but just something to keep in mind. So if you get that, that simply was just an overspray. Okay. We have a follow-up to the mold question. Follow-up to the mold question. Okay, what do we got? So the raised ridges create the top of the petal and the indented ridges create the bottom of the petal, question mark? Yes, so where it's raised here, that actually is the top. And where it, where it grooves down in is going to be the bottom. If you look at the back of your leaves, any of your leaves, So you want, you're pushing it down in to create the back of the leaf, okay? So you have to think opposite. If you look at it for what it is in nature, like this, with them being raised up, 
would look like the back of a leaf. So that's the top when you're pushing it together. Okay. And then um, a couple more. Can you fix the oversprayed ones? The oversprayed ones? No, you cannot fix those. And then can you use rice paper to do this? This wafer paper and rice paper. The question was, um, in case you couldn't hear Jacqueline in the background, can you use rice paper to do this? Rice paper, wafer paper, they are the same thing. They're referred to interchangeably. Um, a lot of times, if you have any books or anyone that you're talking to, um, or if you're watching other videos, people, some people may call it rice paper, some people call it wafer paper, okay? They are the same, one and the same thing, all right? Um, I'm going to do another one real quick and just overspray it on purpose. We'll hold it real close here and get this thing super duper wet. Now we'll get a whole nother one. So this thing is totally wet. Way much, way wetter than we would ever want it. So when I pull this off, I don't even know if you can really see that. You know what? Let me do this with a pink one. Okay. There, you can see how wet it is. It's flopping around. But I'm going to do it with a, I have a pink, some pink petals I made last night. This will show up better on the veiner. Oh yeah, it shows up a lot better. Okay, so if you know you oversprayed it, why is it not acting like it's oversprayed? I really, I oversprayed this really bad to get it. Oh, there, it's starting to crinkle up. Now it's soaking in. That one just took a minute to soak in better. Okay. So, there's our first one, how bad we oversprayed that. <laughs> but this one is oversprayed, and you can see it really doesn't want to come off of the veiner. Okay, it is sticking to it. It's so wet. I can literally let this sit there for a few minutes until it dries up some. I'm gonna wipe up my excess vodka we got going on here. There we go. So the longer you let that sit, that's gonna start to dry back up and the vodka basically is gonna evaporate. So that is your only way as far as to save something that you oversprayed, just let it sit on the veiner, okay? And just hang loose a little bit. If you pull it off, you're going to get this situation, which this one, this one I extremely oversprayed. Or you may end up with something like this, okay? But if you let it sit there, it'll still come off and you'll be okay. So we're gonna set that aside. And now, once we have our petals all set, okay, you don't have to let these dry. I just made a bunch up last night so we, you guys didn't have to wait for me to go through and do the whole flower while we were sitting here. Oh, I didn't do, um, I'll do thing. one of the leaves real quick too, just to show, I've got some already made up, but I'll do one here just to show you. So again, about, whoops, about 12 inches away, lay that down in with the wire on the bottom. And what was our question that we had coming oh, in? We got it. We got it. Oh, we already took care of it. Okay. And then another viewer did. Okay. And there's your leaf. And the leaves, that's where I was saying you may want to give them a little bit more sh more flate shape. <laughs> Sorry about that. And do some bending around with those just because they're leaves and they don't have to have any certain sort of look to fit with the flower. Okay. And then just set those up there to dry. Different colors. 
Okay. So once you have all your petals made up, then your leaves made. Um, leave my excess vodka back off here again. Okay, then it is time to make everything pretty. All right, so we have some pristine powders, edible petal dust here. And our flower petals and then our leaves as well so I have some paradise green all right we're gonna use that for the bases on these now brush wise this is it's a little bit stiffer of a brush but still not you know as you can see it's not super stiff or anything um, just pretty much any sort of artist brush will work for this, okay? And just load your brush up. Now with the green, I'm just going to put a little bit down here at the base of each petal. And then a tiny, tiny bit up here at the tip. All right? Someone asked the brand for the dust. The brand for the dust is Pristine Powders. That I'm using. Where can you get those powders? Christine powders you can definitely get here on our website. And then um, we have several cake supply stores that carry those around the country as well. And those happen to be, um, I don't advertise this a lot on my cake connection page but I actually own another company as well and our other company manufactures the pristine powders so we have a uh, we do the whole FDA thing and all that so I'm I'm a little little well versed on food coloring stuff okay but these are totally edible FDA approved Kosher certified. Okay. So, with the dusting, that shows up good. We did the tips down here. So, I did just the bases and then just a very tiny bit up here at the top. All right. Then, I'm going to take some poinsettia. While you're doing that, is it possible to make a calla lily with wafer paper? Yes, it is very possible to do a calla lily with wafer paper. Um, you just need to make your base, which as far the, I believe they're called throats on them, the yellow stamen throat thing in the center of it. Um, you need to make that. You can... You could honestly do, I'm just grabbing our wet, the one that I overwatered. You could totally take that and just build that up a little bit while it's wet. Okay, make something like that to make your stamen from. There, hopefully that shows up good. And just let that dry and dust it. Uh, you could make your center out of gum paste, um, fondant type thing on a wire also. But you just need to make your center. But then it would still be the same technique. Um, several flowers that I'm, you know, that you might want to make or feathers. There's all sorts of things that you can do with the wafer paper. I'm just giving you the general basics as far as what to do. The main thing is just to get it a little bit damp. But you, as I, you know, said at the beginning, you want to use vodka. To soften it so it will evaporate quickly and then it'll dry back up in the shape that you wanted it okay so with our we have poinsettia here so just a red color and again just loading some on the brushes here all right I'm 
just going to put some out in the center here. Okay. And now this one, someone had asked earlier, can you still move them around? This was one of the petals that I made last night, actually. Okay. And yes, I'm still, I'm rebending it, reshaping it. You can flatten it back out. We'll bend it back down. That wire is going to help hold it in the shape that you want. Okay. And then I just want to bring my red back down into the green a little bit. Not too much. Okay. And then the next thing you can do with them is use your edible markers. Okay. Uh, the markers you can get, um, there's several different brands out there on the market. We have Chef Master here that we sell. Uh, Wilton makes them, Americolor makes them. So, there, you know, several different brands out there. And, and this, I'm just going to hit a few spots on there just to do some of the dots that Lily's traditionally have on them. We have another question. Or, yeah, or, what um, size wire do you use? What size wire do we use? This is 28 gauge paper covered wire. Okay. It's available in the white that we have. Um, I use green for the leaves. There's brown available. And then there's also a, it would actually be a lot closer to this, more of like a lime green type color. We don't, I don't carry that here, but we do have the white and green available. Those are the two most common ones that people use for this stuff. Okay. So, by the magic of TV land, I have the other ones already colored up and ready. So there we have our flower petals all set, okay? Now, I've had people ask me over the years when I've done classes and stuff, can you color these ahead of time before you put them in your veiners? All right? Oops, here. Okay, this is our um, backtracking just a little bit. This is the petal that I oversprayed on purpose, just to show you. If you leave it sitting on the veiner and don't pull it up, it is just about dry now. And you see it didn't shrivel up like that. Okay? So, that is your, your safeguard to recover that. So, this one... I colored everything while it was still flat before I had put the veining on it or added the veining to it. Okay. And then I only spritzed it on the back side in order because I, I knew if I put the sprayed the vodka on the front, it would just run and make a big old mess. So I spritzed it only on the back and then I put it in the veiner and pressed it like normal. Now, I'm hoping you guys can see the difference. I did use pink versus red, but on the pink, I'm hoping this shows up, it actually, even though I only spritzed it on the back side, there's still little blotchy marks on it. If you can see, like, there's, you can see little white spots mm -hmm. and stuff. So that's, that was the only main thing that I noticed with it, but otherwise, you know, yeah, technically you could go ahead and do everything. I put the, the food color dots on, I did all of that before I put it in the veiner, okay? So it worked, but there are some little blemishes, nothing huge, but they're there, so. But you have a question. Yes, we have a question. <clears throat> Can you... Do a beginner airbrush oh, class. Oh, sorry. I thought that was airbrush on these. Never mind. <laughs> I actually, I have airbrushed on the wafer paper flowers before, and I really considered getting it out for this, but 
I didn't want to get too deep into into the coloring. Um, I do plan on bringing the airbrush out when probably with the cookies. I'm not sure if that'll be later this week or next week. So we still Michigan is closed for a couple more weeks. So we've we've still got more fun coming. So yes, I will have the airbrush out. Um, and I will cover basics and plan on actually taking it apart and showing you how to clean it and stuff too. Okay? But yes, you can airbrush on the wafer paper as well. So with the leaves, I'm going to kind of show you three different steps here all at once just so you can see the difference. So obviously you could, you could totally leave them plain if you want. You don't ever have to do any of this stuff with them. And I just have a couple different greens. Um, this is a sage green. This is some meadow green. And this, I, you're seeing exactly what I do, people. I just kind of hit it here and there when I do leaves. Okay. And I go get some more green. This is some of the meadow. I had the sage out first. And this is if I do if I'm doing gum paste, whatever I'm doing, I same thing. Now if if you are doing some sort of competition work, definitely recommend flip it over and dust the back sides of your leaves. You will hit judges that will look for that stuff. Okay? So there you can see the difference. All right, and now if you get too much of the dark on, I just grab some of the light back on there. And you go back and put some of that back over it, just to kind of downplay it a little bit. All right, now, something I learned many, many years ago, and I, my guess would be from Nick Lodge, <clears throat> but I'm not going to swear for sure. The edge of your leaves, if you just go back and hit them lightly with any sort of a red or rust, just a, a nice red color on there, it is absolutely amazing the difference you get in those leaves, okay? Sorry, I know my paper's getting a little dirty here. Right there. All right, right there. So here we've got the red out on the edge. Here we don't. And then here is a completely... Oops. Wanting to move on us. This one has no coloring whatsoever on it. No greens, no nothing. This one has... The greens, but no red on the edges. And then this one has the greens and then the red out on the edge. So oh. you can see the differences. <clears throat> one more question. Okay. How long do they take to dry before you can dust them? Um, honestly, just as soon as I get done making them, I go ahead and start dusting them. <clears throat> You'll feel... I always wear gloves just to mess containing stuff and I had the a licensed kitchen for 20 years here so I am just in the habit I always wear gloves when I work with the food stuff but you know if you just if you touch them with wash your hands first please but if you touch them with your hands you'll feel them if they're still damp at all okay do we have another oh okay sorry I thought they were telling me I had another question so there's our coloring. All right. And then, let me get rid of my mess here. Peel my gloves off to put this stuff together. I don't do so hot with tape. And then I'm not sure. I'm, I'm probably going to botch the question. 
but someone was asking if you have i'm not sure if it's pertaining directly to this but okay. including with a soft paste like a bean paste or bean paste or rice paste i don't know if it'd be in pertaining to this a bean or rice paste yes I have to be 100% honest, I have no idea what you're asking about a bean or a rice paste. Um, I don't know if this is something from more popular in another, I know we have people on from other countries and stuff. Um, I, I have to be 100%, I've never heard of a bean or rice paste, so I really, unfortunately, I do not have a good answer. I, I apologize for that. Okay, now that we have everything colored, dusted, we have some leaves ready to go. We are going to tape everything together. If you have not used florist tape before, I will just give you a quick run through on that. Okay. So, florist tape off the roll is not sticky. You have to stretch it and then the glue inside of it, you can kind of feel it's a little tacky and feel it on there, okay? So, you can absolutely use it like this. This is considered full width, okay? Um, I will be very honest though, once I started cutting it, it is night and day difference you if you cut it at least in half to get half width how much easier it is to tape your flowers together okay so you can totally I'll just cut a little piece off here you can go through with your scissors and cut your tape in half if you want some thinner not my favorite thing to do, but I'm not going to lie, I used two years ago. And there you have some half width, okay? Or, funnest cake toy ever. It's a tape shredder or a ribbon shredder that I think they use it a lot for the, um, like the curling ribbon and stuff too but it cuts tape as well. So, if you just take the end of your tape roll, put it, oh, when the, when, if you purchase one of these from your cake, local cake supply store, they initially come, there are four blades inside there, okay? And I don't know if that shows up at all on the Zoom. I have taken two of them out and just left the center blade in. To do that, you literally just unscrew these this all comes apart and you take the blades out that you don't want. So you can have super, super thin. Just let me move it a little bit. Yep. There, you can kind of see. Okay. So I've just left one blade in here. But then push your tape back through. And don't ever put your fingers down inside there or anything trying to get your tape out. If you have to, use the end of a paintbrush or something or some scissors to slide it through, all right? That blade, it literally is a razor blade. It is super sharp, okay? So be safe about it. But then, just hold that down and pull your tape through. How fun is that? I'm easily entertained, I know. But there you have a whole bunch of half width florist tape. Lickety split. All right. And if you are just joining us, be sure and give us your either shout out hi or tell us if you want to um, give us some class suggestions for the rest of this week and next week. We are doing a drawing shortly. What is that device called? This device 
Um, I believe it would just be called a tape shredder. Or ribbon cutter. Or... Ribbon, ribbon cutter, tape shredder, floral tape cutter. And do you sell those? I do sell those. I think I only have one in stock right at the moment, but I can get more. And I think they're somewhere around $12 or $14. Not, not positive on that. All right. So, our tape. We have some stamens here. And these you can get most any craft supply stores. Um, these happen to be some smaller ones that I probably shouldn't even be showing because I don't have them for sale here in the store. But you can't, and I think Gem and PME discontinued them. I'm not positive on that. I bought a bunch at a show on clearance a few years ago, um, and I believe they told me they were discontinuing them. So I don't know if they still have them or not. Okay. But you can still, as a, you can get pre-made stamens, um, just check in your like silk flower supplies in any of your craft stores. They'll have those. So to make our stamen, I am just taking another piece of wire. All right. And I'm going to lay this down the table here so you can see. Once I get this set, we'll let it all kind of open back up. All right. So I have folded the three. I took three stamens, folded them in half. So right there's our fold. And then I took a piece of wire and made a U up over it. Can we see that okay? All right, I'm getting a thumbs up that we can see that okay. Okay. Whoops. One of them went flying. So, oh my gosh. These goopy things. All right, so we've got stamens, and then we have our floral tape. Whoops. You wanna stretch it to release the glue, and then I'm going to start, I'm going up just a little bit, and then I'm coming back down, and give me just one second, I'm gonna show you on a paintbrush where I can get it to show up a little bit easier. So, if this were your wire, you want to go up a little bit and then come back down and keep wrapping, okay? Now, as you're wrapping, this I, I did it out here in the open just so you can see what we're doing, okay? But, as you're wrapping on the wire, you want to... Twist it between your thumb and your first finger, and you're also going to press down that tape as you're going, okay? So you're working all that as one. I'm holding it back here in my hand, and I'm just making sure that I'm pulling a little bit while I'm doing that. All right? Yeah, we have another question. Oh, we have some questions, okay. Yeah. Um, do you sell the punch tool you use to cut the petal shapes? Yes, I do. Um, I sell, we have the punch shapes. I have a few, a uh, few different leaf shapes available. They are on the website in the wafer paper, flower supplies. I just added a new category last night before I, when I knew I was doing this. So you guys could easily find everything and hopefully everything that I'm using you can find in one spot. And can you make your own stamens by taking a piece of the paper covered wire and dipping the very tip in colored royal icing? Absolutely. 
yes, you can make your own stamens. Um, you can dip them, as someone just mentioned or asked about, dip them in some royal icing. You can also dip them in gelatin and then into, um, if you mix up, some, I'm sorry, some warm gelatin, just gelatin water, mix that. You can dip it into that and then into cornmeal, um, poppy seeds, you could even dip it into more gelatin that just hasn't been dissolved, just the actual dry gelatin, just to get a real fine kind of um, pollen on the ends of them. So yes, you absolutely can make your own stamens. You can make little a tea hook at the end of them so they look, you know, more like some of the traditional lily stamens. I mean, you can do all sorts of stuff with those. Is all floral tape food safe, or do you have to buy a specific kind? Floral tape is not food safe as far, I shouldn't say it's not, it's not toxic, but it, it, there is, to my knowledge, there's no such thing as a food grade floral tape, okay? If you are going to put these into, if you want to insert them into your cake, all right, few options. So you could take the stems once they're put together and dip that, probably the thing I, I like to do most, dip this into white chocolate. All right, just melt a little container of white chocolate, dip it into it, let that sit up, and then you're totally fine for food contact, all right? The chocolate's gonna stay on here when it comes out of the cake, and you're good to go. Um, other, you could wrap it in aluminum foil around there. There are, little flower stems that we sell. Um, you can get them at Florist. We'll have them as well to put your, they should, hopefully, um, if you're doing, you know, a cake, for example, with some fresh flowers. But they make little holders for those, that little picks you can put the ends in. So you can do the same thing with any of your wired flowers as well. Okay? So once we have our stamens put together, and again, don't forget to stretch your tape, then we're going to build our flower. Most any flowers that are bulbs, okay, your lilies are bulbs, your irises, um, your daffodils, this type of thing. Most of them have six petals and they are in two triangle shapes as far as their layers. Okay, so your first layer is made into a triangle and then your next layer of flowers is in the open sections in another triangle, okay? Not always the case, but typically that is the case with your bulb flowers. And also, you normally will have the same amount of stamens as you do petals. Again, that's not an exact science, but normally. So, same thing, I am rolling that tape and the wires between my thumb and my first finger as I have it on a little bit of an angle coming down Okay, and I know some people struggle with taping flowers, just practice. And honestly, the tape is cheap enough. I think a roll of floral tape, typically you can get for a buck, two bucks, somewhere in there. Go buy it and practice on some of your pencils or your paint brushes, whatever. Just practice that rolling if you're having trouble with it, okay? Now I did, I put all three of those together when I taped. You absolutely do not have to. You can do one petal at a time. Okay, and I, again, I start a little bit lower and then come back up so I can get in nice and tight. And then angle it back down and come back down. Okay. If you're doing one at a time, don't put a whole bunch of tape on there. 
Just go add each pedal, run around enough to secure it, and then go get the rest of your pedal pedals and get those in there. Okay? Um, we have a question. We have a question. What do we got? Will um, gum paste flower petal cutters work for this, or will it not work for this? Okay, with your gum paste flower cutters, um, depending on how sharp your edge, if they're metal or plastic, it's going to make a little difference too. You could do a couple things. Um, you can just press them into the wafer paper, because I have done this just to get some different shapes. You can press it in and just get the mark. Okay, so there's our flower put together. Here, let me grab a metal cutter and show you. Yeah, someone just said metal. Hmm? Someone just said metal. So with your metal cutters, now I don't know how well this is going to show up on the screen. I can kind of see my outline there from that and then I can go back with my scissors and cut. All right. Other thing you can also do would be, actually let's try this, I haven't done it with a marker but I have taken some paper towel and sat down. Okay, that worked with the marker too. Um, what I have done before is just taken a paper towel and put some food color on it. Basically used it as a stamp and then went and stamped my cutter outline on it. Okay, so you definitely you can see it a little bit better where I just did that with the marker. Uh, def it does show up better to do the paper towel and just stamp it like that okay but again you've got your outline and then you can go cut now I do recommend if you're using that um, just stay just to the inside of where you've got that otherwise you will see that black or whatever color you use to mark it okay and then when you're not teaching, yeah. how long does it normally take you to assemble one of these flowers? Um, if I've got the petals already and everything, it probably doesn't even take me a minute to tape one together. But that, bear in mind, I did this for I did cakes for 20 plus years. Um, gum paste flowers were definitely one of my uh, side time hobbies. I loved, loved it. That was my rela relaxation. I would go sit and work on gum paste for hours and hours until 2, 3 o'clock in the morning some nights. So I have lots and lots of taping experience with flowers. Okay. So to build your leaves, you can, if you want to, put them together in a little spray. Okay, and use them like that. You can use them individually. Um, I will say with, in taping anything together, whether it's your wafer paper, your um, gum paste, any type flowers, Okay, I have some ferns that I cut out last night and put together too, some fern leaves. Um, just so I grabbed those just to show you here. If, and, oh, let's see. Here, I can show you. So like this, I put this little spray together separately. Okay, so I built this whole thing first and then attached it to the main flower. So I built the flower separate, 
I built this the yellow flower separate and started taping to it to make this spray right here and then taped everything together okay so where I'm going with that you're you want to build out and build a lot of small So anything I want to stick out further, I want to take those together here and keep building down as opposed to, I don't want to just take all three of these loose like this and hook them on the flower here and then just have, because then you're going to have really long wires on the back. Okay, and you don't want that. You want stuff to stay together. So if I were going to do that, I would want to tape these together. And then just as I'm coming down a little bit, I'm going to grab the next one. So you want to get as close to the base of each individual wire for each flower, each leaf, whatever you're working with, okay? to make a spray. And I could still go back and even if I want to tape this all in, here we'll grab some tape, we'll put, add that on there too, okay? So a couple of questions. Can you put a piece of thin craft foam underneath the paper before using the metal cutter so it would cut all the way through? Give me a hot second, let me go try that. I, I have not tried Using some craft foam underneath there. And then... We'll do the whirl and see. <laughs> and then when making flowers, would you say wafer paper is better than gum paste? Uh, it is definitely more forgiving and more flexible. And nowhere near as fragile. But it all, you know, it all has its pluses and minuses, okay? Just depends on the look you're going for and what you want to do. Okay, so there you can see if I tape all this together now here, whoops, grab that too hard and broke some. Um, but you can see the leaf that's way out here at the end is secure and it's going to stay where I put it because I taped all this together gradually going down and made one stem of it. Okay, if I didn't do that and I just had all these loose, they would be going every which way and wouldn't stay put. All right. And just one minute, let me go grab a piece of the craft foam. test and see because I really don't know. I've got a couple different things. This is just some super thin just regular foam. Okay. No, that did nothing. All right. Well, I shouldn't say it did nothing. Uh, can you guys see the little mark it put in there? Yeah. It definitely got a lot better mark than just going on the table. So if you just want the outline marked on there to cut with your scissors, that works great. Um, no. And I pushed fairly hard. You can see the mark in my hand. Okay? It did not cut through there. You got a lot deeper mark in it, though, for cutting purposes. Okay? So there's your answer to that. And this is just some of the fun foam, like the kids' fun foam, that you can get at the craft stores. Where did you learn your master skills of assembling floral arrangements? <laughs> um, my master skills? <laughs> I actually... 
not so much, but as far as arranging flowers, I went and took a class at our local, uh, like adult ed type thing. It's a vocational school. They also do some adult ed stuff. One of my very first wedding cakes, I walked in and there was literally a bucket of flowers, loose flowers sitting there and the florist was gone and the people were supposed to be there in about an hour and the people the manager at the reception hall told me that there's um they were gone they were done they weren't coming back or anything so i suddenly had to become a florist and build these not knowing what i was doing needless to say right after that it became top priority. I went and took a flower arranging class. Loved it. But, um, I, so there's definitely, there's a lot you can get out of that just to go do as far as getting different ideas for layout and stuff and knowing to, you know, try and do odd numbers with all your flowers, that type thing. But as far as this, you know, taping together and no, this is just practice. Um, and learning along the way that, yeah, it doesn't work just to put everything, just to grab three loose flowers and put them out here, or three loose leaves, and tape them all together down here. It looks a lot better if you can, you know, make your arrangements. Stuff holds in place a lot better where you need it. Okay? And then what are the plus, so what are the pro cons when comparing wafer paper to gum paste flowers? This, this is our main, our main pro. Durability, okay. Okay, the durability, yes, definitely. Um, it does not, it's nowhere near as fragile. And I can sit here and move them around and rearrange them a little bit too, once I've got them taped together. Gum paste flowers, you've only got so much give and so much that you can do moving them around. Um, I do, the gum paste flowers, I think you can get a lot more realistic looking. Definitely, as you know, once you do dusting and stuff, uh, the wafer paper, it's, yeah, you can dust them, but you definitely get a lot more realistic look with the gum paste when you're dusting. Okay, but other than that, I give them both a try and see what you like. All right, do we have a winner? Why, indeed, we do. Indeed, we do. So, we have a winner for today's giveaway. And over to Let me mm -hmm. scoot all this stuff out of the way so you guys can go over here and see what we're getting again. This is just some wafer paper supplies. And our winner is Mr. Eric. Who have you got? I'm going to try to not botch this. It is <laughs> Tammy Musseloff. Oh. Musseloff. 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 I'm not. I think that's our Tammy that's up north of Lansing just a little bit. So that is Tammy M-U-S-O-L-F-F. Yes, I'm pretty sure that that's our... Our Tammy shopper that comes in, she's up north of Lansing. Yay, Tammy! Congratulations! <laughs> Whoops, yeah, you don't get the vodka, sorry. <laughs> so we've got some statements for you. We have one of the punch cutters, one of the little spritz bottles, some of the fringing scissors, a six-pack of wafer paper. So you can be on your way making some. Oh, and I did want to show you too, real quick. I made a flower and I did not do a single bit of dusting with it. I put this together last night. This was made with the pink. I did still do the veining on it. But I did absolutely no dusting with that whatsoever. Just so you can see that, you know, if you really, if you're not feeling it, you can still get something nice. All right. Any other questions for today? All righty. They're telling me no. So sounds like we are all done. 
I will go back through the comments and look and see what our most popular requests are for the rest of the classes for the week. And like I said, hopefully I will have a schedule out. Um, hope, we'll try by two this afternoon. Get you a schedule out and let you know what we're going to be doing the rest of the week. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a great day. Bye-bye.